Welcome back, guys. This is Tough Choice. I am the host, Kazim Rahman, on the hot seat today. It is me. All right. Yes, I will always do the applause break for myself. Fuck you. Get your own podcast and you can do whatever you want. So this is our deep dive episode where I go through some more dilemmas, some questions for terrible people, some what would you do questions and some would you rathers. So let's go ahead and start. Actually, you know how the game goes. Um, I have to choose between the two choices. I get one pass. I get one pass. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Let it begin. Let it begin. All right. Would you rather slap a random toddler in the face in front of their parents one time or get slapped in the face 10 times by an NFL linebacker? Listen, um, we're all about self-preservation here on Tough Choice with Kazim Rahman. Hashtag Tough Choice. But Ah, oh, man. Okay. If I'm a, okay. I don't want to hurt a child because there are repercussions with hurting a child, especially if you do it in front of their, in front of their parents. Technically, if the child is young enough or no, see, it's a toddler. So a toddler is like two, three, four, and five. That was, that's a toddler. A kid is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A toddler Man, all right, dang, this is harder than I thought. If you slap a toddler, you're going to jail. If you, no, 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 let me rephrase that. If you slap a toddler and get away, you're good. If you slap a toddler in front of their parents, you're going to jail and you might get beat up by the father, right? Because it's both parents, right? Unless like their parents are like, you know, some really small butch lesbians or something like that. I don't know. Perfect world. If I need to slap a toddler, it needs to be like some like really small couple from Peru, right? I can just knock them over, slap the toddler, run. You know what I mean? It'd be a quick, it'll be a quick in and out situation, but we don't live in a perfect world. So most likely the parents will be of age and will chase me down, um, especially if I slap their toddler. So I'm going to, dang, I'm going to have to get slapped by this NFL linebacker. 10 times. That's going to suck, man. That's going to suck. Right. But you don't want to go to jail. You don't want to be, you can't be a sex offender, but you can. I mean, if you go to jail for abusing a kid, whether it was sex abuse or um, regular abuse, right. Then you're going to be a target. All right. Would you rather be left at the altar by your fiance or Leave your fiance at the altar. Damn. All right. Pros and cons. If I leave my fiance at the altar, that means I made the decision. That means this wasn't either way. This isn't a mutual decision. Someone's getting left at the altar. If I leave, I'm the bad guy. I made the decision though. And it's less hurtful for me. But if I'm left at the altar, then yes, it's going to be heartbreaking. Yes. It's going to tear me apart. Yes, it's going to be embarrassing. My family, my friends, her friends, her family. At the same time, it's a good story for you, especially if you're a stand-up comic like me, right? You need stories. You need content. And if, if, if the wedding's going to be over, it's a better story if you're left at the altar. It's still a good story if you leave her at the altar, but it's a better story if you're left at the altar. Also, I really don't like confrontation and confrontation is definitely leaving them at the altar. Would you rather take a $10,000 bonus for yourself or split a $10,000 bonus with your colleagues? <sighs> Dumbass questions. Listen, that was the, okay. Let's just, just hear me out. Hear me out, right? Hear me out. I'm taking the money. That's it. There was no, there's no, there's no, what else do I need to say? Honestly, be honest with yourself. $10,000 bonus. And you want me to split that with somebody? Was it given to me? Do they know that I could have split it with them? Okay. Okay. Now we're thinking about it. If they don't know that I could have split the bonus with them and they just know I got a bonus. And I'm taking the money. 
But if the boss brings us all together and he says, listen, Kazim, we got 10 racks for you and only you. Or in front of everyone, he says this, in front of everyone in the company, he says, Kazim, 10 racks for you or we split 10 racks with everybody. Now, honestly, it depends on how much I like these coworkers. Honestly, if we're being honest, right? The job now couldn't care less about these coworkers because I've, I work from home. I've, I've, I've never met them. So, you know what I mean? So I don't need to split any bonus with them. So if I'm just using the job now, I'm taking this $10,000. It's 10 racks. Come on now. Right. And you know what? Your coworkers will understand your decision because they would do it too. Right. Let's say right now, if your coworker said, hey, the boss said either 10 racks for me or 10 racks for everybody. No, I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. Okay. I wouldn't understand. I'd be pissed because I would have shared if it was for everybody. If everyone knew, I would have shared. But whatever. So what would you do? While camping in outer space, you and a friend are bitten by a venomous snake. There's only enough antidote for one person and the nearest hospital is on another planet. What do you do? Hmm. Um, well, in all fairness, I'm taking the antidote, right? It's most likely going to be a fight. How far, this pla- how far is this planet, right? Will one of us die before we get to the planet or will one of us need like emergency help when we get to the other planet? Perfect world. If it's like my really good friend, listen, honestly, if we're being honest, all joking aside, I, will, I would say flip a coin or paper, rock, scissors for it. And then the person that wins takes the antidote, flies to the next planet and you just fight for your life. You know what I mean? And the other person just fights for their lives because one, here's why here's, I'm assuming this is a good friend. Because it said camping. And one, I don't go camping. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not doing that. So if you got me to go camping, we're good friends. Like we're best friends. So if we're best friends, that means I already trust you to act in our best interest. So I'm perfectly fine just doing paper, rock, scissors right quick. Right? Will I cheat in the game of paper, rock, scissors? Of course I will. You know me. You know how this game goes. You know, tough choice. You know, you've known me, right? Will I cheat? Of course, I'm going to try to cheat. Will he cheat? He's my friend. Most likely he'll cheat, right? Most likely. But whoever wins takes the antidote, drives the next person to the nearest hospital, right? That's what I would do. Now, if we're just camping and I don't know this dude, as soon as we realize there's only one antidote left, I'm punching him in the mouth and knocking him clean the fuck out. End of discussion. Then I'm going to take the antidote and then I'm going to take him to the hospital. Listen, I'm still a good person. I'll still take him to the hospital. But if he doesn't make it, my bad. Simple as that. It really is my bad. Just saying. Would you rather be rooted to the ground like a tree or every time you sneeze, Half a gallon of ice cream comes out of your nose. Hmm. Listen, I like ice cream. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm reading it again. It said rooted to the ground like a tree. You can't go nowhere. And even though right now, while we're recording this, we're still in the Rona, I, I need to be able to leave my house. Oh my God. I need to be able to leave my house, right? Unless it's like, like Groot, right? Groot is a tree from Marvel movies. Right. So but no, we know what it means. You're rooted to the ground like a tree. You're stuck exactly where you are. And personally, I can't do that. So I'm going to have to have a bag, a gallon bag with me at all times, especially when I'm sick or congested. Right. Half a gallon of ice cream. I'm honestly I'm hoping that this ice cream is like dope ice cream. You know what I mean? It's half a gallon, half a gallon, half a gallon hurts. 
half a gallon is going to hurt, right? Because that's a lot of stuff coming out of your body at once. And when I sneeze, I don't know about you guys, but when I sneeze, it's not just one sneeze. It's three or four sneezes. So we're talking about two to two and a half gallons. Oof. I might want to get rooted to the ground like a tree if it's going to be two and a half gallons. But when's the last, think about it right now, when's the last time you sneezed, right? If you're sick, don't think about it, you son of a bitch. You're sneezing. Okay, we get it. Get over yourself. But when you're not sick, when you're not sick, when you're not sick, when is the last time you sneezed? You don't sneeze a lot, right? But you still have to carry the gallon bag with you. Carry it like a backpack, right? When you see, when you feel a sneeze coming, boom, whip the backpack off, open the backpack, sneeze in the backpack, right? And then find the nearest restroom to clean out the backpack. Just saying. All right, let's do some moral dilemmas. If your entire life was being recorded and broadcast on TV, as in the film, The Truman Show, which network would you find yourself on and why? Remember, you're not any less valuable as a person if it's not for profit, if it's a nonprofit um, channel. PBS has had constantly amazing programming for decades. Hmm. I don't know. Honestly, I think my show would be, well, I want to say it's CBS because CBS does a lot of boring, um, non-raunchy, regular shows. But let's be honest, right? My show's going to be on like MTV or some shit, right? I would love Fox. Perfect scenario. It's actually on NBC. By the way, backtrack. If you don't know what Truman Show is, let me explain. So Truman Show, it's on Netflix, by the way. Check it out. It's actually a good movie. Truman Show is a Jim Carrey movie where basically a guy has been living his entire life in a reality show and he has no idea and everyone knows it but him. So his wife, his dad, his mom, everyone in the town, it's a fake town that is a, is a production studio. Everyone knows everything is fake but him. It really is eye-opening, right? And there's so many parallels to what's going on now with reality TV and how everyone wants to be famous and how everyone wants to know what everything that's going on in your life. It's interesting. But what network would I be on if we're being, if we're being completely honest, most likely Fox, because it's still network TV. So it's not like raunchy, but it's still going to be wild. Right? Like I fucking, I refereed a fight at an open mic one time. And that's a story for another time but I did referee a fight in an alley behind a food for less because two guys wanted to fight. One, one of them had two pairs of gloves and I was the referee. It was hilariously ignorant. And uh, yeah, I don't know how else to explain it. So that would be part of the reality show, right? Me trying to make it in LA, me trying to navigate life, right? Relationships. I wonder how they fucked on the Truman Show. Damn, I never even thought about that. Damn. Wow. All his relationships were, were, were fake. Whew. That sucks. That sucks, man. I couldn't do Truman Show. If I knew, I wouldn't want to do it. But if I had, if I had to do it, I would, rather, I, would, I would rather not know, to be honest. Because that's just depressing. All right. You're forced to choose one person in your life to live out a single episode of any television show as whichever character you'd prefer for the rest of eternity on repeat. Which person, which show, which character do you choose? Damn. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't know the person. I can't think of a person off the top of my head because I'm not married, so I'm single. Um, I will say the show probably a parks and recreation. And then I would be Tom Haberford. And that's the Aziz Ansari character on parks and rec. Um, very good show. One of the best shows. If I can't do parks and rec, 
I guess I would do, I guess I would maybe do The Office, maybe do, ooh, honestly, if I could do Power, that'd be great. Power from Stars, if I could do that, that'd be great. But not an episode where people die. So it's going to have to be like during, during an episode like early on in, in the season, right? Because each season people start dying at the end of the season and it's a bloodbath. So I'll, I'll do power. I'll do power. What character? Oh, you gotta be, mm, no ghost. You can't be ghost. Ghost dies. You gotta be Tommy for power. I'd be Tommy for parks and rec. I would be Tom Haverford for what other shows for shameless. I would be lip. And then that's it. Only three shows. I would really only do three shows. Shameless, Power, Parks and Recreation. I, I don't know the person I would, I can't think, I can't think. I can't think of a person I would want to live the rest of my life on a, damn, I can't, I really can't think. You have to relive an episode of either Shameless, Parks and Recreation, or Power for eternity, for the rest of your life. And you want me to pick one person? I can't pick one person. I can't, damn, I don't know. Huh, I'll come back to that. The next one, I'll come back to that. Because I need, I need to do a, I need to do a, I need to, you got to give me a second for that one. Pee Wee Herman, Gilbert Goffrey, Fran Dresser, Sarah Palin, or Ray Romano. Which of these people would you choose to narrate every moment of your waking life, Discovery Channel style, for a full month? If it's just going to be a month, I'll do Gilbert Godfrey. If it's going to be anything longer than a month, you got to do Ray Romano because Ray Romano can, can narrate stuff. His voice is very calming. If it's going to be Gilbert Godfrey for a month, that's going to be the most hilarious shit ever of my waking life. Oof. Well, a lot of it is just acting like I'm working, but you know, it, I don't know. I honestly don't know, but Gilbert Godfrey would be dope. I, I would enjoy Gilbert Godfrey, right? By the way, look up Gilbert Godfrey and look up, um, the aristocrats joke and prepare yourself to learn comedy from a master, right? What would you do? You run the Taj Mahal club and accidentally booked two famous bands for the same night. Both bands want to play, but neither will go on the same stage as the other. What do you do? Well, one, well, one, one's going to have to go before the other one, right? It's not hard. And the easier is who has more bangers. Whoever has more banging songs goes on stage last, right? So let's say I booked like J. Cole and Kanye West. You know what I mean? Why would I, why would I, in my right mind, put Kanye first and J. Cole after him? You put J. Cole first and then Kanye after them because, listen, Kanye has way better songs than J. Cole. You can't say I'm lying. Can you, can you genuinely say that musically J. Cole is better than Kanye? When it comes to music, when it comes to preference, it's whatever your preference is. So the, the question itself is stupid because who do you like more? What artist do you like more, right? If it's like Taylor Swift and Kanye, Kanye goes last. If it's, let's say, let's pick some two random people, um, Nicki Minaj and Kanye, Kanye goes last. Let's say, okay, let's pick two more random people, if it's like Justin Timberlake and Kanye, Kanye goes last. You know what I mean? Like either way, it's not hard to choose what happens. Just saying, I don't, I don't think it's hard to choose, but sometimes people think it's hard to choose. All right, guys, let's do some rapid fire black excellence. Amazing. Greatest Amazing. Perfect. Amazing. As you know about this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read some situations and then I read whether or not it is more likely to be Barack Obama, the 44th president of these United States, or Oprah Winfrey, all right? Quick, 
Quick fire. What if we had to keep quiet during a break in? Who would get you murdered? Oprah. She, yeah, Oprah would get me murdered. She's too big and clumsy. She's going to fall everywhere. What if you ordered a pizza? Who wants stupid toppings like broccoli, artichokes? Come on now. Oprah. Oprah. Oprah would want a stupid topping. You know this. I know this. What if you broke up with your significant other? Who is most likely to edit out their face on social media? I mean, Oprah. Oprah seems petty. What if a van said free candy pulled up? <laughs> Come on now. Oprah's getting... Oh, all, all of these are Oprah. I don't know why. It feels like all of these are Oprah. Right? What if a van said free candy pulled up? Who's getting abducted? You really think Obama? You really think Obama is going to be like, oh, free candy. And he's going to just go get free candy. Come on. Come on, fam. Come on. What if everyone was homeless? Who would have the nicest dumpster? Fuck. The nicest. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I would say, hmm. I would say Obama looks like he's, I think Obama would keep the, would have the nicest dumpster simply because he would keep it clean. I don't think Oprah has cleaned anything herself in a long time. What if you're playing basketball? Who yells Kobe before each, every shot? Obama's going to yell Kobe. I don't think Oprah understands that it takes a, it, it's, it's very nuanced to understand why we yell Kobe when we shoot the basketball. It's hilariously, it's hilarious fun, right? That's the point. Why do we yell Kobe? Because what else are we going to yell? You know, guys, now it is time for our final choice. It is a merry fuck kill. All right. My three choices are Beyonce forever and always. We have Will Smith and we have Jada Pinkett Smith. Merry fuck kill. Oof, this is hard. This is very hard. All right. I'm going to have to kill Will Smith. I don't want to kill Will Smith. I don't. You know this. I know this. Right? Bad Boys 4 is going to come. Bad Boys 3 was a good movie. Bad Boys 4 is going to come out. Right? He's going to make like three more good movies. He's going to get a lifetime Oscar. I want him to have those things because they're coming. But he has to die right now. Now, hear me out. You fuck Beyonce because you don't marry Beyonce, right? You don't want to be the beta in that relationship. That's just not the life that you want. Be honest. And you marry Jada Pinkett Smith. It is well documented by now that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith have an open marriage. It's fine. It's understandable. I expect the same responsibilities that Will Smith had when I'm married to Jada. Open relationship. I don't give a fuck about your kids. We, we are cool. It's a life partnership. You know what I mean? It's just what it is. It's fun, right? Maybe you'll not mess around with B-rate R&B stars. It's fine. It's none of my business. Do what you want to do. But everyone signs an NDA. That's all I'm saying. You know what I mean? But we're, but we're married. And we can talk about all of that before we get married, because I have some requirements. You will have some requirements. How are we going to navigate the world? Right. Can I take money from Jaden? His dad is dead. Can I take his money? Can I take Jaden's money? That's a, that's a big question. No one wants to touch Willow's money. That's fine. But Jaden decided to get a million dollars paid to him to wear a dress. I want some of that money. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that money is for the culture. I'm just saying you do what you want, but there are repercussions and the culture deserves to get paid for what you did. Guys, that is our episode. This has been Tough Joyce with Kazim Rahman. I have been your host, Kazim Rahman. Find me online at Kazim Comedy. That's K-A-Z-E-E-M. Like, subscribe, Share this podcast. We are growing. It is amazing. I love all our fans. And if you have a tough choice question, or if you have a what would you do, or if you have a, just a funny moral dilemma, or if you have a would you rather um, question, or if you have a Mary Fuck Hill you want us to consider, please 
Email toughchoice at outlook.com. That is toughchoice at outlook.com. I've been Kazim Iman. You guys have been amazing. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>